If you're using Revit, stop creating finishes schedules manually with text, detail lines or images because there's a better way. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a finishes schedule using dynamic Revit scheduling. In Revit, schedules are more than just presentation tools. They're powerful auditing tools that directly report on the data embedded in your model. Revit schedules allow you to tap into your model's data and even view it in 3D. Simply select any value in the schedule and Revit will highlight it where it applies in the model's 3D view. It's a fantastic way to audit your project and make sure that the information you're issuing is accurate. For example, in our finishes schedule, the material finish is linked back directly to the wall type. On the right side of the materials dialog, the identity asset contains all the data about that material, and this information translates directly into the schedule. You'll notice on the far right of the schedule that there's a custom material parameter which I've created. This allows for more control in organizing and auditing finishes. You can add custom material parameters in the project parameters tab. Now let's create a new material. I'll start by duplicating an existing one and use the asset browser to find a suitable appearance. Autodesk provides a wide variety of out-of-the-box assets, which are sufficient for most projects. In this case, I'm looking for a standout tile finish, and this medium blue works well. I'll swap out the duplicated appearance with the new one, which includes an image and relief pattern for rendering purposes. On the Identity tab, I'll rename the material. This step is key. Staying organized with naming conventions will save you time and ensure clarity of information across the schedule. Before a material appears in the schedule, it needs to be applied in the model. I'll start by duplicating an existing wall type and then apply the new material finish. It's important to maintain naming conventions here also, especially for separating construction walls from the finishes. Once the wall is in place, I can move on without having to worry about cutting elevations or adjusting profiles. Revit handles these automatically. We'll get to that in a moment. For now, let's jump back to the schedule. I have two types of material takeoffs, one for presentation, labeled print, and another for working out the data, labeled create. In this case, I'll search for the medium blue material by its name. With no filters applied, Revit lists all materials used in the model. Revit functions like a database, which is why relying on text, notes and lines is bonkers. The scheduled information is linked to the material's identity asset. Updating one automatically updates the other. In the presentation schedule, the medium blue tile isn't initially visible because materials are filtered by a custom parameter. This separation of data is vital when dealing with large projects. I've hidden this field in the formatting tab, which is how I manage the difference between the create and the print schedules. Now I'll bring it back and enter the necessary values And there we go, the medium blue tile is now listed under the tile subheading. Back in the model, I'll align these walls.
and use Revit's tools to seamlessly join them together. Revit will automatically cut out the doors. With the finish layer separated, tagging these elements becomes straightforward. And because the tags are dynamic, any schedule changes will automatically update the tags as well. After this, you'll be saying goodbye to those tedious manual workflows. Adding a count parameter to the schedule helps with auditing. For example, if I change the material type, the count updates accordingly. This is perfect for tracking finishes throughout the project's life cycle. Another major advantage of using skins for finishes is the construction phase. Since finishes are separated, you can easily filter them on or off in your set out drawings, making it easier to focus on the structural elements. Revit even allows you to add images to schedules. On the Create iteration, I'll add a Material Image field. Activate it and then select the associated image. You can use a free online image scaler to curate a more refined look. Autodesk includes pre-scaled images with its assets, making this process quick and easy. And that's it, you now have a fully functional finishes schedule, ready for audits and presentation. I hope this video helps streamline your Revit workflow. If you found this tutorial useful, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.